the book of Genesis. Book of Genesis for me. Amen. Uh, right off the back, we're going to have a few scriptures that I'm going to read this, this morning. And then we'll get into the word. I want to get the scriptures into you first because it's important to get these scriptures into you. I want it to, to resonate in your spirit because I'm sure, well, you understand as the message comes. I'm excited about this message. I want to get it all done today, but I don't know if we're going to get it all done because I don't know what the spirit is going to do in between me giving the word. So right now we just got a part one. <laughs> Part 1. If you have it, Genesis 15, please stand to your feet. And we're going to read verses 13 and 14. And then I'm going to go to, from Genesis, I'm going to go to the book of Exodus. So you can go ahead and have Exodus chapter 3 ready also. Because as soon as you sit down after Genesis, I'm going to go right into the book of Exodus. Amen. Amen. And if you have Genesis 15, Verses starting with verse 13, it reads as thus. Then he said to Abram, Know certainly that your descendants will be strangers in a land that is not theirs, and will serve them, and they will afflict them 400 years. Verse 14. And also the nation who they serve, I will judge. And this is, this is where we get our subject title from right here. After, after they shall come out with great possessions. You may have a seat in the present. And what we see right here, what we're talking about, you understand they're talking about the Israelites coming out of Egypt. And after being imprisoned for 400 years of bondage and imprisonment by the Israelites. I mean, the, by the Egyptians. And they held them captives all this time and worked under bondage. But the great part is, it says, after this, and this is what I want you to understand, after this, they will come out with great possessions. And I want you to keep that in mind because I want you to understand all the struggles that you're going through. All... Everything that you're going through right now, after this, you shall come out with great possessions. Remember that in your spirit. Exodus 3 and 19, all the way to verse 21. But I am sure that the king of Egypt will not let them go. No, not even by a mighty hand. So, so Pharaoh is saying... And, 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 and they were saying in this scripture right here, they're saying, Pharaoh ain't going to let him go. I'm sure he's not going to let him go, not even with a mighty hand. So nobody can force Pharaoh to let him go. Verse number 20. And it says, so I will stretch out my hand and strike Egypt with all my wonders, which I will do in its midst. And after that, he will let them go. Say that with me. He will let them go. So if I will give this message a subject title, it is, you shall come out. And I'm telling you, whatever situation that you're in right now, you're going to come out of it. And I'm going to give you a very, very helpful clue how you're going to come out of it if you do what God says. Verse number 21. I want to take a step back. I, I, I want to look at this, this verse number 20 again. So I will stretch out my hand and, sent, and strike Egypt with all my wonders which I will do in its midst. And after that he will let them go. You know what came to me? Oh, when God gets through with us. Oh, when God gets through with us, can you just imagine what he's going to do for us when he gets through with us? Watch what he did to the king of Israel, Egypt. What did he do to Pharaoh? But when you come out of your mess, when you come out of, all, out of your hard time, 
what is God going to do for you if you do what's right by him? Now watch verse number 21. And I will, verse 21 to, and through 22. And I will, and it's still Exodus 3, I'm sorry. And I will give his people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. Do we have any God's people in this house? So did that, at that time, you should have realized something is special about you. You should, I, I, I shouldn't even have to tell you that you need to take a praise break somewhere. When you realize who you are in God, Willie, can you turn me down a little bit? When you realize who you are in God, when you hear something like this, you need to start praising God like you've already received what he has in store for you. <laughs> Verse number 21 again in Exodus 3. And I will give his people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. And the Egyptians, let me tell you, this is your haters. The Egyptians are your haters. So God says, I'm, Brother Prince, I'm going to give you favor in the sight of your haters. What are you going to do when God gives you favor? I, you know, I, I want to take a break and just listen to that James Fortune song again. <laughs> favor is stalking me, folks. <laughs> it's, it's literally chasing me. Do you understand? Watch us. Watch. If we understand in a leadership class yesterday, we was ex explaining them to understand, like I always tell you here at this church, and you too, Angel. Know who you are in Christ. And when you know who you are in Christ, you're going to understand how this favor stalks you down. Watch how simple this thing is. And if we get this, the your everyday life, whatever you go through, you're going to see the simplicity of God's favor upon your life. I'm in Sam's Club yesterday, and I, I want some fish. And in the store, I, it's, it's haddock fish. I said, man, how, how this thing taste? How, how, does it, how, does it, how do you cook it? So I know my aunt and uncle, always fishing. They fish them. They, they love fish. So I called my uncle. I said, I asked him about it. He said, mm -hmm, I don't know about that one. You got to talk to your aunt. So he put, she said, I don't know nothing about that one either. I said, man. She said, but hey, try it anyway <laughs> and cook it and let me know. She said, I said, okay, I'll bake it. She said, but the, the thing is, with certain fish, you can't bake. It won't taste good. And certain fish you, you can't fry, it won't taste good. So you got to be able to know how to bake it or fry it. Which one is it? So I called Deacon Qualls. I said, well, Deacon Qualls should know. He, 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 he's a pastor. I ain't never heard of that. I'm like, man. So I said, well, I can't go wrong with flounder. <laughs> so I pick up the flounder. But in my spirit, I wanted this haddock. I just wanted it. So I looked at the guy who came. And he picked up some crab legs. I said, well. I said, I just went over there and asked the guy how much the crab leg was, so five pounds. He said, fifty-five dollars. I said, I don't. That's not a good price to me. I can go to Kroger's and get five pounds for twenty or thirty something dollars. He said, Ooh, thanks. I said, By the way, you know anything about fish? He said, I'm from. Watch this. This is the key. He said, I am from Maine. Oh, wow. <laughs> I said, Of all the people in the store. <laughs> In South Carolina, he said, I'm from Maine. I said, so you know about how? He said, man, that's the best fish you want to eat. His wife said, okay. and his wife was behind, so I guess she was listening. He, she said, oh, yeah, all you got to do, and she began to tell me how to cook this thing. Are you talking about favor? I'm all the way in South Carolina, and they from Maine, and we're looking at the, he said, just cook. She said, you, can't, you have to bake it, and I want to bake it anyway. I ain't want to fry it. She said, but you got to bake it on high. I looked, I said, oh, Lord, thank you for the favor. Do you understand how favor is in you? When you, everybody's looking for God to shower down a house, a home, a car, but God said, my favor is unlimited, and you got to be able to thank me in no matter what and how I give it to you. That is favor upon your life. <laughs> understand how this favor works. <laughs> hey, favor is stalking me now. It's chasing me. 
It is. <laughs> Let me finish this scripture. I'm getting too excited too early. <laughs> so the sight of the Egyptians, we're still at tw uh, Exodus 3 and 31, 21, I'm sorry. And it shall be when you go that you shall not go empty handed. Hey, men and women of God, boys and girls of God, wherever God send you, stand up in that sound room. Wherever God sends you, he's not going to send you empty handed. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? So if you go by the leading of God's spirit, his will, his bill. So he's going to take care of you. So the thing that you got to realize is don't go outside of the will of God. That's where the struggle begins. Thank you. Amen. Verse number 32. But every, and listen, this is the key for everybody in here. I mean, 22, I'm sorry. I, some reason I want to go through 32 or something. I'll get to it later. Verse 22. But every woman shall ask of her neighbor. Every woman shall ask of her neighbor. Nor, namely, of her who dwells near her house. Articles of silver. Articles of gold and clothing. And you shall put them on your sons and daughters. Mama, daddy, you hear me? You shall put these on your sons and your daughters. So you shall plunder the Egyptians. So watch. What, what took place right here? The Egyptians got plundered. And I'm telling you right now, Egypt is still, still in a struggle from this plunder today. But it was interesting how God told them to do this. God didn't tell them to go get no food. God didn't go tell them to get no cattle. God said, I want you to get clothes. I want you to get jewelry. I want you to get gold. I want to get you silver. I want you to get what's going to prosper you. So never let nobody tell you that God's people are supposed to be poor. Even though scripture says that the poor is going to be amongst us. But what you got to understand, it does not got to be you. I may start it off in a poor situation, but the scripture says that greater works shall I have and greater things shall God have give to me. I have not because I ask not. So as soon as you ask God what you need, he's going to provide if you align yourself up with him. Amen. But we got to line ourselves up with him. So let no, it, it, I, I get frustrated when I it's a pastor friend of mine, or me and Pastor Wendy and the wife and the husband pastor. They have a nice vehicle. But they say they will never drive it to church. They don't want people to see what they have. But how do you, do you expect the church to come up if they can't see it first from the pastors? Not saying that we're supposed to have better things than anybody, but somebody got to see some change, and it got to start from the head of the church. It has to start. It's not that we're in this thing for, for, for monetary things, but they have to see a prosperous life in the pastors. Your children got to see a prosperous life in you if you expect them to be better than what you have been. I don't want them to struggle like I struggle. So they have to be able to see it. And if you see it, you can know that you can obtain it. Greater should be for you, you and your children. But they got to see it for, you, for them to move forward with this. Now look at verse 19. It says the king will not let them go. Then you look at verse 22. And it says that you shall ask or demand something. What's the difference between these two verses? It's a stark difference in between these two verses. Well, I'm glad you asked. The, the difference in these two verses is they have verse 21 in the middle of them. And what did verse 21 say? <laughs> so you got from the, the king not, and you got from demanding, and in the middle, you got the favor of God. That's the difference in between these two. It says, I will give his people favor. Here's what verse 21 said. I will give his people favor. So make this thing personal. He will give. 
and put your name in there. Favor. He will give Pastor Campbell favor. He will give Top of the Mountain favor. He will give us favor. And I'm going to tell you, when you come out, you will now come out empty-handed. <laughs> so you got to start trusting God and thanking God. There is an exodus in this thing here. And look at the fulfillment of prophecy God made to Abram in Genesis 15. When he told him, your people will be enslaved for 400 years. And afterwards, they shall come out. <sighs> I think the church missed it. Am I in the right church? Because I think y'all missed that again. In Exodus 15. Verse 15, it says that they was enslaved for 15 years. In chapter 15. They were enslaved for 400 years. But the thing is that you said, and afterwards, they came out with. They came out with. Come on now. They came out with. God said, when you come out of your storm, I ain't letting you come out broken. He said, I, when you come out of your storm, and this is how we enter this storm, when you come out of this thing, you're coming out with favor yeah. on your life. That should have done somebody, something to somebody in here. It should, have, it should have had you jumping and moving in here. Because I understand the struggles that I went through. I understand the hardship that I went through. And look at what God favored me with now. He put favor upon my life. And when you've been in here. And you understand it. It's, then it says, and then all of a sudden. You hear these words. Shall come out. Whatever struggle that you're in, and you look to God, he said, you shall come out. <laughs> but see, the thing is, when we come out, you ain't coming out empty-handed. You coming out with the favor of God all amongst on you. And it's, gonna, and it's chasing you. And, you know, I keep, and it says favor ain't fair, but sometimes favor is fair. <laughs> sometimes it is because it stalks the right people because it favor understands who gonna, who's going to enjoy what it has to give you who's going to take care of what God gives you this favor is fair because you went through hell to get it and now that you have it that you're going to be able to obtain it and hold on to it because you know what it took to get it so you can't tell me that at times favor ain't fair I mean it is fair you shall come out of marital trouble. You shall come out of financial hardship. You shall come out of employees getting on your nerves. You shall come out of baby mama drama. You shall come out of this. You shall come out of sickness in your body. You shall come out. This makes me think of Genesis 15 and 14. In the B part of it is in my spirit. It says come out with great possessions. Great, all that you went through up in mine not. <laughs> and you thought that was hell because of the, the, the cold and the isolation. But look what you came out to. Did he come out empty handed? Over a million vi views on a video that he had. What they call you, platinum? <laughs> he got platinum. He shall come out. So just think, stop crying about the struggles we had. Stop crying and complaining about the process that God placed you in and start thanking him in the middle of it because he said you shall come out of this. <laughs> I'm coming out. <laughs> and Pharaoh looks good all over me. That's what we got to understand. It looks good. You're talking about, I don't want to be in the wrong church. I got to be in the right church. The right church lines me up with the right favor from God. <laughs> the, right, the right word on the right time is going to put me in the right place to receive the right favor. Do you understand? And that gives you the right hand of fellowship with God. Everything is on the right time. 
because you're walking in, walking in favor. You're walking in his favor. Thank you, Lord, for your favor. Thank you, God, for the obedience that you placed in the people. God, I just want you to continue to flow and shine favor on their lives. I just want you to come out. That's good news to me. That when I see you shout, when I see you jump, and you rejoice in the midst of a storm. Because you understand the favor that's chasing you down. The favor that has you. You understand what I'm talking about, Keandre? The favor that's on your life. When you smile, Angel, you show the favor that's on your life. <laughs> it's a little struggle right now, but you're going to come out of that too. <laughs> but the favor, not just small substance. If we look at the scripture, was it small? He said, they took almost all that they possessed when they went to borrow the stuff. It wasn't small. We don't serve a small God. We serve a big God. Right on time, God. All providing God. Man, I come out of being somewhere in isolation for these many years and I got three jobs knocking me down, <laughs> trying to, try to chase me. You can't tell me I don't have favor of my life. The first thing they're going to say, you've been incarcerated, brother. You can't get a job. That ain't my testimony, you tell them. I'm serving a mighty God. I don't care how long I was locked up. God said, if I serve him, he's going to be just to me. He said, I'm going to be able to name it and claim it. We ain't talking about prosperity ministry, but I'm talking about the favor that's on your life. Because you understand who you are in Christ. That's what it's about. Not understanding who you are and whose you are. Man, tell me. I still hear people say, I can't get a job. I can't find a job. Why are you going to South Carolina? There ain't no jobs. For me, I'm telling you me. This is me. Jobs was knocking at my door when I didn't apply for it. And let me tell you, and it was a GS job. And we know how that process go. Got examples. How favor chases you down. When you line up with God, when you put yourself in the rightful place, not no small substance either. The thing that is going to qualify you for great substance is great affliction. So what are you going through? What are you going? Was it great? Being away from your family for many years, being away from everybody is not, a, not affliction, a great affliction. But look at the great thing that comes out of it. Man, you can get you, got you a, a, a good wife to be, got a good family coming. And, and not only that, you inherit an even greater family being part of the top of the mountain Christian ministry. On top and rising. <laughs> and, I, and I know most people don't want to hear that I've been through great affliction. I don't want to hear that, Pastor. <laughs> but guess what? You can't obtain until you go through. Because God has to trust you. We're living in an age where everyone wants to be great. That's the age. Everybody wants to be great. But see, somebody thinks that they, they are entitled to greatness. But you got to understand how, what it took to get to that greatness. That's the key. Can everybody, go, can everybody walk through what it took to be great? Or to get to the greatness? To be real, there is a process into greatness. We got to go through a process to obtain greatness in this thing. You don't just wake up in the greatness because it won't be yours. You won't be able to keep it. You just, you just don't, you got to say process to yourself. Lord, I'm ready for the process if you want to be great in him. But don't say it unless you're ready for it. Because believe me. It's a process. And it's not going to be an easy process. If you don't understand the God that you serve. You walk into greatness one faithful step 
at a time. Most people want to jump like they're Superman into greatness. God says one faithful step at a time. And I don't walk fast, so I take small steps. So that was a long process to get to where I am now and get to where this church needs to be and understand it's another process for us right now. We're going through that process right now to obtain what we want to obtain in this community. How I embrace this process. How you embrace the process. We should have more people. No, it's a process. If we're not prepared, how are we going to be able to receive them when they come in? How are we going to be able to take care of other people when they come in? We got to work at this process. Let me show you how you get there. You have to go through something to get to your greatness. I know you don't want to hear that, but you got to go through something. Let's go to 2 Timothy 2 and 3. And I'm just going to read a small part of it. It says, you have to be, you have to be prepared to endure hardship as a good soldier. We've got some military people in here. You understand what a hardship is? Hardship tour. I had to go through a hardship tour when I was in. Now they let, they let families go to Korea now, don't they? It was a hardship tour for me when I went to Korea. I couldn't take, I couldn't take Donnie and Pastor Wendy when I was in Korea. So we I had it's what was considered a hardship. I understand being away, isolated from Saudi Arabia. Hardship stuff. But as a soldier... So you got to understand that you are soldiers in the army of the Lord. So as, as 2 Timothy 2 and 3 says, that you have, you have to pre be prepared to endure hardship as a good soldier. As a good soldier. you got to be prepared to receive this hardship. You will never be great until somebody lie on you. I think y'all might have missed that one. You would never be great until somebody lied on you. <laughs> somebody broke your heart. Somebody told, somebody told you that you will never amount to something. That's part of your greatness. Do you understand me? Or when you go through stuff like that. The Bible says that you have stuff. Suffered a while that he will establish you and make you perfect. Is what scripture says. You will go through stuff. But he says you're going to suffer for this stuff. But I will establish you and make you perfect. So you got you to be able to take on this stuff. You got to let. Okay they lied on me. So what? You know the truth. Did it hurt? Yes it hurt. But that's part of the process. And you got to be endure the process to become great of, and, and perfect in the will of God. It's a process to be able to get you to where God wants you. They're trying to tear you down. But can you walk strong during this process? I, I have, being a police officer and you understand this, you're going to have plenty of people lie on you. Almost every call, if you do your job right, they're going to lie on you. How do you present yourself? That's when they're going to know if, you, if you're truthful or not. They used to call daily on me and lie. And watch, watch one of the lies they said. He cussed me out. And they said, you, whatever you said up until that part, you could have been true. But as soon as you said that he cussed you out, I know you was lying. Endure the process. Because God is going to make you perfect. But y'all might have missed that. Let me, let me help you here. Go to 1 Peter. I'm helping us to be able to obtain what God has in store for us. God is bringing us out. I'm letting you know you're coming out of it right now. 1 Peter 5, 8 and 11. It says, be sober. Be vigilant. Because your adversary the devil walks about like a roaring lion, seeking who he may devour. Resist him, steadfast in faith, knowing that the same suffering are experienced by your brotherhood 
in the world. So guess what? Everything that you're going through, you're not going through it by yourself. You have other people that's going through the same process to obtain the perfection that God wants in your life. So you don't, you don't got to say, woe is me, why am I? Assemble yourself with other saints and you guys talk and understand what you're going through because they're going to reveal the sufferings that they went through. And you watch, iron sharpens iron. So when you, when you think you're by yourself, you, you huddle up with other saints and you strategize how to become a victorious in the process. You're not, on a, you're not Revis. You're not on an island all by yourself. You have a team. Let the team help you. We're, am I not my brother's keeper? I want to help. Verse number 10, but may the God of all grace who called us to his eternal glory by, G by Christ Jesus, after you have suffered a little while, perfect, established strength and, and settle you. So he said, watch this. He said, you have suffered a while, but watch, I'm going to perfect, I'm going to establish, and I'm going to strengthen you and settle you. God has given us a promise. Whatever the process is, God is going to promise you and he keeps his word because he's not a man that he should lie. Verse number 11. To him be the glory and the dominion forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever. Amen. That might not help somebody though, huh? I might have to do it this way. Go to... Go to um, Let's go to the Message Bible. I want to read the same scripture, and everybody don't have the message, but listen to me. It says, keep a cool head. See, I like the Message Bible. I call it my Ebonic Bible. It, it just breaks it down. It takes you where you need to be. It says, keep a cool head. Stay alert is what it tells us. The devil is poised to pounce and would like nothing better than to catch you napping. So, he, he ain't going to try you while you're walking. He won't even wait till you're napping. He, that means he don't want you to be prepared. So he said, and then it goes on and says, keep your, your guard up. So always be prepared. Instant in season as well as out of season is what we need to be as saints. You're not the only ones plunged into these hard times. So once again, you're not, on, you're not out there by yourself. And it goes on and says, it's the same with Christians all over the world. Every Christian is going through this, something that you're going through. Somebody's out there going through what you went through. You're not by yourself. So it says, keep a firm grip on faith. Don't let faith go. Firm grip. Hold faith tight. And then it says, the suffering won't last forever. It won't last forever. It won't be long before this gracious God who has great plans for us in Christ. Eternal and glorious plans. They are. Poof. Man. Will have you put together and on your feet for good. He gets the last word. Yes, he does. If you ever wonder who God was... Get ready, because he's going to bless you. And when he bless you, you're going to understand who he is. Can I tell you just, do you know somebody that's being greatly persecuted right now? Do you, do you know somebody like that that's being persecuted right now? Or is going through some hard times right now? Can I just tell you, persecution always points to promotion. Man, we're quiet in here. Persecution always points to promotion. You about to be promoted. You need to know that rejection, betrayal, jealousy, and hatred, they come against us. The life of a believer is nothing but a setup for a step up. Can I tell you that? Your life is a setup for a step up. Everything you're going through is, is setting you up for your step up. You're coming out of this thing. You're coming out. 
Let's take a look at Genesis 37, where we find a young boy by the name of Joseph. Joseph's first dream of greatness. Joseph was sold by his brothers, but he had a dream. In chapter 39, Joseph, uh, in Genesis 39, Joseph was, was a, a slave in Egypt. Let's look at Genesis 38, 7 through 20. Here we have, we have the same devil chasing Joseph, but it was a she-devil chasing him now. She was lying on him. Told her husband that Joseph tried to rape her. And Joseph, eh, eh, Joseph said, let me get away. He ran from that woman. She grabbed his clothes and said, see, here's his clothes that he left behind. She lied on him. Oh, she-devil. Have you ever had your brothers lie on you? Ain't nothing worse than family going to lie on you. Your brother's tearing you down. His brothers was eaten up with, with jealousy, with the favor that was on his life. His brothers couldn't take the favor that was on his life. They was jealous of this man because of the favor that was on his life. And everybody that is in your family isn't happy with your blessings. Everybody's not happy for you. And we know that. There will be some that will rejoice with, with those who rejoice. And some that just turn their head up at you and walk away. Some haters in your family that don't want to see you make it. And our family is some that don't even like you being, that, that, that like seeing you elevated out there like that. They don't like that. Because it ain't them. They're going to hate on you. Because they couldn't obtain that. But watch this. All they had to do was align themselves up with the same God that you serve. Same God. But this is when I shout. I'm still here. I'm still here. And still getting elevated by the God we serve. He's still rising me up above that. And I don't even get mad at the haters no more. I thank them because it's showing me that I'm in the right place. It's showing me that I'm doing the right things that I need to do. There are just people that no matter what you do, you can't make it right with them. Sometimes you just got to leave some of them alone. They will never be your friend. Because they hate the position that you're in. And can I just tell you a secret? It's not necessary to hate you. But it's the God that's inside of you. That's blessing you on the outside. That's what they hate. And they can't get that. I'll try, let me bring this thing. How do I want to do this? The police department, in order to question you, they have to read to you what's called your Miranda rights. And I'm going to read this thing to it. said, the first you said, you have the right to remain silent. So that means, just be quiet. Let God talk for you. You don't even have to say nothing. When they, when they attack you, don't say nothing. Don't even say nothing. It says you have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in the court of law. See what it, what, what it says. We don't step back and think about what we have said. We let it poof, come out. So we think about the process of what we got to say. Don't just say anything because it can be used against you. Number three, you have the right to talk to a lawyer. You have the right to talk to God. Come on now. And have him or her present with you while you being questioned. God said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. You always have me with you. Why not talk to me before you open your mouth? Why not get permission from me? If you cannot afford to hire a lawyer, one will be appointed to represent you before any questions is asked of you 
God said, you don't need to charge, charge me. He said, I'm there. All you got to do is ask me. It don't cost you nothing to ask me. You can, you can decide at any time to exercise these rights and not answer any questions or make any statements. This is a waiver. God said, I have a waiver for you. I sent my son to die on the cross for any and everything that you went through. After the, after the warnings and in order to secure a waiver, the following questions should be asked and a non-affirmative reply secured to each question. The first question is, do you understand each of these rights that I explained to you? And you have to answer. Do you understand all the rights and privileges that God has given you? And what you need to say is yes. You need to verbalize. I understand the rights and privileges I have from God. Number two, having these rights in mind, do you wish to talk to us now? And it's yes or no. So watch this. When the enemy comes after you, if you, if you went to your Lord, your God, and ask him to give you what to say. When, the, when Satan comes at you. Do you want to question or reply to what he says? Yes I do. Because I got the word from God. I am like my brother do. I say only what the father has me to say. How that gets you out of it? You can't be silent when you got God in you. You can't be silent when God is in you. And you know what? I want to get to another point into this message. And when I get to this point, I think I'll be finished. No. You know what the other point is? So come back next week and we'll give you that another point. Hey,